Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from MizuraAutomation.com and welcome to part 11 of our Cucumber Visarinium course. And in this video, I'll be talking about latest extent reporting version 4.0 support. And this is going to be a complete continuation of our previous video where we actually discussed about creating all the different libraries that we really require for our extent reporting. All right, so let's get started. So in our last video, we created this extent reporter method for the extent reporter utility class and we also created extent report screenshot and flush reporting and today we are going to make use of all these methods that we have actually created and once again to make use of this method we just have to recall our pseudo code that we discussed in our previous video so the first thing we need to do is to create this particular extent report object and then we have to call the features and then the scenarios and the steps and since this particular extent report variable is being called within this extent report method. So the first method to incur is going to be this extent report method itself. So for some reason, we are going to be calling this extent report method within what is called as our listeners. So as you know, the listeners plays a key role in calling our test. And at the same time, they are the one which is going to be invoked for the first time when the test actually starts. So basically, I will be calling the listener in what is called as within our on test method on our on start method. So basically, within our on start method, I'll be calling our extent report method. And then from there, I'll be creating the features, right? So I'll be first calling what is called as the extent report utility is equal to new extent report utility and then I'll be calling this particular variable within our on start method. So here I'll be calling the extent report method that we created. So this guy will actually create all the important setup that we really require for our extent report which is nothing but creating the actual report itself. And then once it is created the next thing that I need to do is to call the feature right so as you know within the extent report utility we can actually call what is called as the features as well and now you can ask me where is this particular feature actually coming from so basically these features are coming from let me go here and you can see this guy the extent report utility has this base utility and it actually has what is called as features so for doing that i'm just going to go over here to the import package and then I'm just going to be calling this import of static base dot base utility dot features so if I do it this way I can actually call the features here something like this and within this feature I can call the extent report utility dot extent dot and you can see there is something called as create test method if you remember these are the same methods that we discussed in our previous video where i was showing you the different implementation which the extent report class actually has got right so here i'm just going to be calling the feature dot class and you can ask me why i'm really running so fast because it seems to be a new concept and i have not even explained it clearly and once again for the extent report i have already discussed that in our c sharp course and again this has been expanded even much further in our advanced series where we discussed how this extent reporter can be leveraged even further so it's much greaterly discussed over there but as of now for the basic just keep in mind that so basically this feature class actually sits within the extent report and within this feature we have scenarios and within scenario we have steps that's what you have to be remembering and that's what we are doing in the error right and see i'm just going to be hard coding the feature name this time and i'm going to call this as login feature so it's more like a hard coding as of now and this hard coding will be removed in a different way and once again this is something i am not going to be discussing for the basic course so it's hard coding the feature name which for sure is going to be a problem we have to remove this for sure right so this is going to be a to do so guys please make sure if you could do that you can do that as well right so this is the feature that we have hard coded it in here so once everything is done the next thing is on the test failure we actually have to take a screenshot so for taking a screenshot I'm just going to be adding a try catch block 
uh, over here, and then I'm just calling this accent report, uh, accent report screenshot, and this guy is going to be giving me a IO exception if some, for some reason the uh, file doesn't exist or something like that. Print stack trace, right? So that's the last implementation within our listener as well. So you can see that we have probably grown a lot within our listener this time. With all these things are done, we then have to now switch back to our hook file where we actually have to initialize what is called as a scenario. So far, we have not included the scenario yet. So we have just created the extent and then the feature. And the next thing is the scenario and then the steps. So if we have these two in place, then we can see there will be a nice report being generated. So if you try to run this test right now, so I'm just going to run this uh, for now. And if you see this time within this particular reports folder, you can see there is nothing here. There is no XML HTML file being created. And the reason is because throwing as an exception saying that it couldn't be able to add the screenshot yet within that particular file, which is really cool because we have not completed the code yet. So let's start working with the other features, by the way. So I'm just going to go to the hooks and then I'm going to be adding the scenario here. So once again, for the scenario, I need to do one more thing here to get the scenario name. I'll be just doing this, what is called as a scenario class. I'm just going to be calling here something like this within my before attribute. And with this, I can actually pass or maybe get the name of the scenario. So I'm just calling the scenario definition, which we just called within this particular base utility. And then within here, I have this features and then I can create node and then I can just do this scenario dot get name. So you can see this way I can get the name of the scenario using this particular scenario definition, which is very, very cool. Once this is done, I can then start writing the steps within my login steps class over here. So for the login steps class to be added, I just have to do this. I have to do the scenario definition dot create node. And because we have to list all the step name within the scenario, I'm going to be adding the new of Gherkin keyword here as then. And then I, I'm going to just say that I should see the user form page, something like this. And I'm just going to close this over here. See, this is what you should do. You should keep on doing the whole thing here to just keep on adding the whole structure, by the way, so that this way it adds all the stuff for you. So I'm just going to copy paste the code, which I have already written so that I don't really have to type each and everything. And you can see that it actually shows the step name over here, pretty much like how it is before. And the final operation that we need to do is to add a scenario definition for the failure, which we ignored in our last video. So within this here, I'm just going to be saying that for the scenario definition of failure, I'm just going to add the details and then I'm going to add the screenshot, which is captured from the path, which is nothing but the report location plus the screenshot.png over here. I'm just going to save this. And then finally, we need to also add what is called as the flushing the report. So once the test is completely finished, I need to flush this whole report. So I need to add that as well. For some reason, I forgot that completely. So here, accent report dot flush report, right? So you can see, I can quickly run down again. We actually did what is we created this extent report invocation within our extent report method that we created here. So this is something very, very important to get the handle of the extent. And then we need to first create the feature. And that's what we did in our test listener here with the extent report and then the feature. And then we need to create the scenario and that we did in the hook for the scenario, we got the name. And once we have the scenario, we can then run down all the steps. And that's what we did 
within this particular login step over here. So we added all the scenarios login steps here. Very, very simply, we just added, we just copy pasted the text so that we can display that within our report. And once everything is done, if there is any failure happening, we also need to report that. And that's why I'm actually calling the failure within the on failure method of the listener. That's why listener is very, very helpful. And once everything is done, we need to flush the report so that it can generate the HTML file for us. As of now, as we saw before, we don't really have a report in here. So now I'm just gonna be going all the way to the SNZ.xml file. Hopefully this time if I run the test, it should have a report in here. So let's see what's gonna happen. So now we have our HTML report. So if I open this guy, you can see that we have a very, very nice looking report. For some reason, all the test has got passed and that's why there is no screenshot. And there is also a null pointer exception happened within our screenshot capturing area. And that's why this test has got failed, which we can probably debug and see what's really happening. So I'm just gonna put a breakpoint in here and I'm just gonna run this particular uh, XML file, testing.xml file and see what's really happening. So now it has got failed. Now we are coming in here. Oops, it seems like the driver is currently failing and the reason is because the driver is actually null. So if we could see our base utility here, actually the base utility, our driver is actually a non-static driver. And that's the reason this particular report is actually not generating. So I'm just gonna be changing this guy to a static. And once again, you should be thinking that the static variable will introduce not running the test in parallel. I completely understand that. And these are something we have already discussed in our advanced series where we have handled this even much better. Instead of web driver, we use remote web driver. And instead of the non-static, we use threading and parallel execution support with synchronization in much greater detail in our advanced video course. So I'm just gonna be changing this to a static. And you saw that within our HTML report, we don't really have an XML file screenshot. So now if I run this uh, test, hopefully this time, once the test fails, it actually has a screenshot for us this time, which is very, very cool. And now if I go here, it shows us clearly that there is a failure in the test. So this report shows us that. And if I just expand this, we have a screenshot. If I click this, you can see it also brings me a screenshot of the failure, which is very, very cool. And this is a new reporting guy. This is a new reporting which is generated by the HTM Extent Reporting team. It has a dashboard, it has a search feature, and it has all this pass and failure. So these are all coming exactly from our report that we just added within those steps. And you can see there's a login feature, and this is the hard-coded value that we have within our code within this particular listener that we just saw here, right? So that's it guys, this is how we can keep on extending this particular code even further with the different kinds of reporting and different level of features. And once again, this is the 2019 and we have upgraded this particular code to 2019 guys. And once again, thank you very much for learning this course and have a great day.